Okay, today we're going to do an install of the 7CP02 breakaway cruise control. Um, before you begin, you want to turn your throttle and check to see how it snaps back. The cruise control shouldn't affect the way that your throttle snaps back, so make sure that it's that way after the install is finished. Um, also, if your bike is not fuel injected, turn the fuel supply off so you don't flood the bike because we're going to be turning on the throttle a lot during this installation. So the first thing you want to do is loosen your brake lever where it's mounted to the handlebar. Should be two allens or sometimes they're hex head screws. You just loosen those up and move your brake lever over just a little bit so you make a gap for the support. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is remove the support from the package and remove the two screws to separate the clamp from the support. And then you want to loosen this end screw right here. Make sure that's not tight. Just loosen it up a little bit. Okay, so then once you got the support underneath there, you want to reinstall the cap and snug the screws down equally. You don't want to tighten them at this point. Just snug them down so that the gap on each side is equal. And you still want to be able to rotate the support up and down. Get the support mounted. You want to slide your brake lever back over and tighten it up in a comfortable position. You might want to sit on the bike and feel where your brake lever's at so you get it in the back in the position that it was in before you moved it over. You want to make sure that it's not touching the support. It's really important all the way around, up, over the top, and everything. Look to make sure that nothing is touching the support when you tighten this up. If anything's touching it, it can bind the cruise control up as you tighten this because it can bend the support. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is prepare the unit for the installation. First thing you're going to do is pull the rod end screw out of the rod. Grab the cruise control out of the package and stick the rod into this hole in the clamp. Reinsert the screw. Tighten it up. Nice and tight. Alright, the next thing we're going to do is remove the cap. You've got to remove these four Phillips head screws from the cap. Use a nice number one Phillips head screwdriver. And remove the cap from the slip ring. Just set it in a safe place for now. Okay, so in your kit you're going to find four different thicknesses of adapter rings for various grip diameters. You need to find the appropriate one for your grip diameter and here's how you do that. Just take the ring and open it up and put it over the grip like so and push it together. It shouldn't come all the way together. You should, this gap it shouldn't be real fat like that, but it shouldn't come all the way together when you squeeze it onto the grip. This is the right ring for this grip. Okay, so once you determine which ring you want on, you want to move one of these little indentations up here to the very top. And then we're going to take the cruise control and slide this unit over the grip, kind of work it over the little nub on the end, slide it over the grip, and line one of the set screws up with that little indentation right there. And as you're sliding it on, you're going to bring the rod into the hole in the support. Line that up, make sure the set screw stays in line with the indentation, just like that. So you want to look here and make sure that the bushing is all the way in, all the way against the lip on the slip ring inside of here. Okay. Then we're going to bring the screws down and just until they stop, don't tighten them yet, just bring them down equally until they kind of stop against the ring a little bit, not really stop, but just you, you'll see the ring start to move. Just kind of bring them down until they're, just, you just feel them hit the stop against the ring or hit against the ring, just a little bit like that. We don't want to tighten them yet because it'll elongate the, the ring and it'll make it difficult to get the cap on. The next step is putting the cap on and when we do that we want to line the holes up, the access holes with the set screws 
and that will automatically line the screw holes up for your little flatheads. I found the best way to put these flatheads in is hold it on the end of the screwdriver with your finger, stick it in the hole, and screw it in. That way you don't drop it. Okay, so once you get all four screws in, go ahead and snug them up. Tighten them up good. And then we're going to finish tightening the slip ring to the grip by these through these little axis holes. We're going to stick the wrench in there and go a half a turn at a time. There's a half a turn on that one. Rotate the throttle to get to the bottom one. We go a half a turn there. We kind of do a crisscross pattern here at a half a turn at a time. Back to the top. It's starting to get tight now. We don't want to over tighten these screws. So that'll be it for those two and should be it for this one and this one as well. That way everything's tightened equally. Then you want to check, make sure it's secure by holding the ring and trying to turn the grip. It should be nice and tight and secure to the grip and the grip should snap back like normal. It should run nice and true. When you rotate the grip, this should not run nice and true with the rotation of the grip. You shouldn't see any wobbling this way or movement up and down. This ring over here should be consistent all the way around with the grip. There shouldn't be a big fat side and a thin side. It should be nice and consistent all the way around the grip. That way it runs nice and true. Okay, so in order to set the cam height, we're going to rotate the support up or down as you need to. In order to make sure that the cam, you're going to pull the brake lever over the cam and rotate the support so the cam just touches the bottom of the brake lever right there. I'm pushing the support up. The cam is just barely making contact with the bottom of the brake lever. And that's with the cruise control disengaged. So once you've established that position, just come up here to the top and tighten these two support screws to maintain that position for the cam height. Get those two screws nice and tight. Okay, for the next step, we're going to engage the cruise control. So you want to squeeze it together like that until it pops into engagement. This gap should be about a sixteenth of an inch when this plate is fully up, engaged in onto the catch pin right here. You want to make sure that it's all the way up and all the way engaged. It should snap into engagement like that, a nice positive click. Okay, once it's engaged, come over here to the front and you'll see that your throttle will have a little bit of movement back and forth. You can see that how it's moving back and forth right there. What you want to do is find the center of that, that slop or that play. Find the center and hold it there and come over here to the front and tighten this one rod screw right here. To keep that right there nice and secure. Okay, for the next step we're going to set the cam position behind the brake lever. In order to do that, you have to engage the cruise control. Make sure the cam's not hitting the brake lever when you do that. And then we're going to slide the cam right up behind the brake lever. You don't want it to touch, but as close as you can get the cam behind the brake lever without touching it, put a little 5 16 open end wrench on the bottom of uh, for the nut and slide that up just behind the brake lever and tighten it up. That way when you just touch your brake, it should disengage the cruise control. Shouldn't take any more than that. Okay, so now your installation's complete. Be sure and refer to sections four, five, and six for testing, adjustment, and maintenance. And you should be good to go.